My name is David Standard from the USA, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to this opening session of the World Parkinson Congress. Uh, this is my sixth World Parkinson Congress. I've managed to make it to all of them, and it's a really uh, exciting event. I always look forward to it. It's unique. Uh, I can think, can't think of another meeting where we really bring the whole community of people concerned with Parkinson's together, and it's, uh, I think, a really energizing and uh, hopefully informative event. This morning, we're talking about hot topics, uh, always a very exciting subject. These are uh, brief presentations. They were su selected from among the poster submissions. Uh, we had a record number of poster submissions this year, so really a tremendous amount of interest in the meeting. And so these four brief talks will highlight uh, information that's presented in the posters. We have 15 minutes for each. Uh, if there's time at the end of the presentation, we will take some questions. You can use either the mobile app or there's some microphones there. Uh, if we run out of time, though, we're going to move on to the next presentation. So whether we can take a question or not will really depend on the timing. We want to stick to the schedule, get everyone started off on schedule with uh, World Parkinson Congress 2023 here in Barcelona. All right, so our first speaker, uh, the title is Genetic Findings of the Rostock International Parkinson's Disease or ROPAD Study. Uh, it's going to be presented by Christine Klein from Germany. Dear Professor Standard, dear David, thank you very much for the kind introduction and I would like to thank the organizing committee for selecting our abstract. But first of all, I would like to welcome everyone, dear persons with Parkinson's disease, dear caregivers, dear therapists, dear doctors and dear scientists, dear colleagues and friends. Um, it's a really great pleasure to be here today, this morning. Uh, and very unfortunately, um, Anna Westenberger, who tirelessly analyzed the data over the past two years, could not travel for health reasons. So, unfortunately, you have to bear with me, and I will uh, replace her this morning uh, on behalf of Anna Westenberger and the ROPAD investigators. This is Anna's disclosure statement. So the ROPAD study, we already heard, it stands for Rostock, uh, which is a city in northern Germany. Parkinson's disease study is an observational study that aimed to determine the frequency and the spectrum of genetic variants that contribute to Parkinson's disease in an international cohort. We included over 12,500 unrelated study participants. They all had a clinical diagnosis of PD and were older than 18 years. They were recruited at a number of different movement disorder centers in six 16 different countries, and that happened between April 2019 and May 2021. So what did we do in terms of genetic analysis? So uh, a gene panel, a deep sequencing next generation sequencing panel was run. It contained 50 genes with an established relevance or with a potential phenotypic overlap with Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism. And so here I can uh, just start off with the Parkinson's disease. So the confirmed genes, they're here in alphabetical order. I don't think I'll read them all to you, but these were the, uh, the this is the main, uh, the, if you will, the uh, backbone of this panel. In addition, there were genes that were related to atypical Parkinsonism, dystonia Parkinsonism, neurodegenerative diseases with Parkinsonism, dystonia dyskinesia, and also dementia. So let's look now at the results. So first of all, in the pie charts, you can see that the uh, male-female distribution is 62% men and 38% women, as we typically see in Parkinson's. And family history uh, was positive for Parkinson's, was positive for about a quarter of those, which is also in keeping with what is reported in the literature. When you look at the ages at onset, um, the, the, the median ages uh, first at onset on the left, you can see that the median age of onset was 59 years. A clinical diagnosis was established just a year later at 60 years, and patients um, and persons with Parkinson's disease were 67 years old at enrollment of the study. So let's look at the ethnicities. I told you there were many, many different countries and centers involved. However, ethnicity, as is the case with most studies still, unfortunately, these days, was uh, predominantly white. Uh, so 92% of the study population were white. Um, and then you can see uh, the, um, th there are others as well, Asians, Hispanics, Black uh, or African American, um, and uh, then also, of course, a few others. And I will come back to the, um, to the question of ethnicity in a, in a moment. 
So we performed also, and this was not part of the original ROPAT study, but really is a follow-up study, um, a whole genome sequencing. So not just the panel, but really whole genome sequencing in uh, um, two and a half thousand patients, about 20%, to define the cohort ethnicity better, but also, of course, to find potentially additional uh, pathogenic variants that might have been overlooked uh, with the uh, panel. And so what did the ethnicity uh, show? Because as you probably know, it is possible to determine ethnicity based on whole genome sequencing data. Um, and so this is what we found. Uh, at the bottom of this figure, you can see what the um, persons with Parkinson's disease reported in terms of ethnicity. And then um, the, the bars, um, the colored bars, they represent what the genetic findings actually showed. And so you can see, for example, for the first one here for the whites. So you see that indeed the majority, in fact, were North European in origin, um, Caucasian, or South European. So uh, in fact, the ethnicity, the reported ethnicity, um, matched very, very closely the genetic ethnicity that we were able to confirm. Um, and uh, so you can see, for example, the next one, uh, black or African American. So you can see, indeed, the very vast majority are also African based on the genetic results, and so on and so forth for all of the other ethnicities as well. What did we find in terms of results uh, of the gen actual genetic results? So this is, um, maybe I should draw your attention first to the very bottom of the slide so you can see the percentage figure, the last one in bold, is around 15%. So we found among all of these 12 and a half thousand patients, about 15%, close to 15%, who received what we refer to as a PD relevant positive genetic testing report, or PDPGT for short, because I will be using this um, in the coming a few minutes. Um, and so if you then break this up further and go back to the top, so you will immediately see that GBA1 indeed uh, comprises, uh, you know, uh, more than 10%, so accounts for the, really, for two-thirds of all of these reports, followed, not surprisingly, by pathogenic variants in the LERC2 gene, which uh, account for about 3%. When we look into GBA1 and LERC2 in more detail here on the right, you can see that the two risk variants that we also counted in here and where um, patients did receive a genetic testing report were the two common uh, risk variants listed here. However, there was also a large number of Gaucher's disease-related variants, almost 50%, that re reported back. Among the LORC2 pathogenic variants, again, the vast majority, not surprisingly, um, was uh, the, uh, the uh, G2019S, which is the, was known to be the most common, and others uh, um, comprised 20%. Uh, Let's now look at the sex distribution. Uh, so this is interesting. So on the left, when you look at the bar diagram, you will see the idiopathic PD patients. So we call those idiopathic PD that did not receive a genetic testing report. So the 85% of our cohort compared to those on the right that did receive a PDPGT. And so you can see when it comes to sex uh, that indeed um, the, the sex difference that we observed in the overall cohort pretty much goes away um, when, uh, when it comes to, or, you know, changes at least and moves more to, towards the 50% mark when it comes to the genetic testing reports. And that, of course, is no surprise because Mendelian, these are Mendelian forms of Parkinsonism, and of course, um, the genes don't, um, you know, they, they, they are equally distributed among the sexes um, for both dominantly and recessively inherited forms. And this was significant, as you can see below uh, this, uh, the, the scheme. Looking at family history, um, again, probably not surprising. Again, on the left, uh, the left bar shows you the IPD patients. The right bar shows you those that received a positive genetic testing reports. And probably not surprisingly, the family history in those receiving a positive uh, testing report was, of course, uh, higher and very significantly so than those in those that did not. Let's now look at the age of onset distribution. And here you can see um, 
that uh, the age of onset again, um, again, I'm sure you're not surprised, in those that received a positive genetic testing report is lower and, uh, than, than in those that did not. And this was highly, highly significant. You can see 10 to the minus 34. Um, and even though this age difference is only four years, 55 to 59, it got so significant because the sample was so large. So what determines, uh, or, you know, what are the predictors of a positive genetic testing report? And really the strongest, again, please look um, at the age and onset, you can see that really is the main determinant of the uh, likelihood of finding a positive genetic testing report, 10 to the minus 35 here, followed by family history, which um, adds also a bit, but a lot less, uh, 10 to the minus 14, and then as female sex as well. So this is a very busy slide. Let me just point you to one or two interesting um, uh, um, data points here. And if you are interested in learning more about the ROPAD study, please come to the poster. It's number 31 today, um, and you will find a lot more details there. Um, so when you look here, this is um, patients with a positive testing report and an age of onset below 50 years. So here, uh, the percentage goes from the 15% goes up to 20%. And if you move up higher, you see that immediately, you know, in those under 20, 20 years of age, it's already 37%. Um, when you add those, the factor of family history in, again, you have higher numbers. And here at the very top, oops, sorry, at the very top, you can see if you have a positive family history and you have an age of onset below 20, you have a 50% likelihood of receiving a positive genetic testing report, so 50%. Um, looking at individual genes here, so this is um, just what uh, also stood out. So when we compare idiopathic PD versus GBA1, uh, we have an age of onset difference. Of course, the biggest difference is um, with genes that are recessively inherited, Parkin, Pink one, DJ one, all three uh, have an early age of onset when they're mutated, and alpha synuclein as well. Um, also, when we compare the recessive forms of Parkinson's with GBA1, LR2, and alpha synuclein, again, we see these significant differences in terms of age of onset. Um, we also see this um, in terms of uh, GBA1 again, which is the commonest, as you saw, um, that we found, and it is uh, the age of onset of the GD-related um, pathogenic variants is also lower, um, significantly lower than in uh, IPD, and so are variants in the LOV2 gene. We also, I mentioned this before, we also had uh, um, other genes on the panel, and so we found patients, three patients with atypical Parkinsonism, 35, uh, 34 with dystonia Parkinsonism, uh, six with other new degenerative diseases, 26 with dystonia dyskinesia, and 29 um, with dementia. And summary, uh, variants in Parkinson's-related genes contribute to the disease in 15% of all PD patients according to our inclusion criteria. 90, about 90% 90 of the patients who did receive a positive genetic testing report had variants in LARC2 or GBA1, making those uh, the most important um, at this stage, and also they, these um, persons can be potential candidates for the ongoing gene-targeted trials. Positive findings were identified in 27, so in about a quarter of all individuals with an age of onset uh, below 50 years and a positive family history. And remember, in those even younger, below 20, so juvenile, it was 50%, suggesting that genetic testing may be offered preferentially to these patients' group with a young age of onset and um, a positive family history. A small number of PD patients had variants in other genes, and uh, the ROPAT study really does inform, because it is so large, differential genetic counseling as well as uh, patient prioritization for genetic testing and clinical trials. And with this, I'm at the end, and I would like to thank all the persons with Parkinson's disease who participated in the study. You saw there were more than 12,500 of them, and of course, also all of the ROPAD investigators for participating. I listed all their names here. Of course, I don't think you can read them because there are so many. Please come to the poster. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Well, thank you, Christine, for that. I think in view of the time, we will uh, hold the questions for the poster. So thank you, and we'll move on to our next talk here.